So what decisions should you have made before you get this process started? So the first thing that you should do is everybody should get a little bit of familiarity with in vivo, whether it's working with somebody who knows it or taking an online course or just reading about it. So that's everybody should have some basic familiarity with in vivo. The next thing you should do is meet and designate somebody an in vivo file manager. So this is going to be your in vivo guru for your project. They're going to do the in vivo things. And by that I mean they'll create your file that has all the data in it. They'll make any changes. They'll drive during team meetings when you're, you've got your merged file together and you're looking at how things are changing. They'll understand how to set up and run a coding comparison query. They'll be in charge of making sure your in vivo file is good to go, up to date, and functioning well. Another best practice when you're collaborating is to create what I call a team file. So this will be the InVivo file manager's job. They'll get all of the data, all of the nodes that you know you want to code for, um, all of the memos ready to roll, and they'll create a team protocol that are the rules for how you're going to code. Everybody should have a rule that says, don't edit documents. Bad things happen. But this might also have some decisions around, for instance, can you create new nodes? And if so, where do they go? And do they have to have a description? For me, I recommend that, yes, if you choose to allow your teammates to create new nodes, I typically have a node called new nodes. Sometimes I'll put a letter at the end of the alphabet in front of the name of that node, so it drops it to the bottom of my list, like an like X new nodes. So at the bottom of my list, I have a, a node called new nodes, and any new nodes get put underneath there. So if a teammate decides, oh, I see this idea, and I don't want to lose the fact that this theme is emerging for me, they create it under new nodes, and they add a definition and why they want to add that node, right? How does it relate to your research question? Another rule that should go in your team protocol is always work out of your own copy. So never do work out of the team file unless you're the file manager. And so again, this is just to encourage you to work really clean because the challenge, particularly with asynchronous, are these file versions and things can get sort of screwy. Another best practice that, uh, that I recommend no matter whether you're working as a team or just working on your own is that any copy of your in vivo file should include the date. So it inc should include at a minimum the project name and the date. If you're working as a team, the name of the project file, the copy that you've made, should also include the initials of the person that will be working out of that copy. So it's very clear that that person downloads their copy and starts working on it. Again, make sure that people in your team understand, and I also recommend adding a line in your team protocol that everybody maintains their own, um, their own research journals and that that lives as a memo. One decision you should make as a team is how are you going to capture questions? One way to do that is to write the question in your memo and have a node called questions. That way you can code parts of your memo to the node called questions. And that's a nice place for you to check during your team meetings to talk through any questions that people might have. And you can uncode things from that node as you deal with them. So it's just a, one practice that I've seen work well to deal with team questions. Another recommendation is each time you meet, keep those meeting minutes as a memo so that you have this nice record of how your coding has evolved and changed because it will, because this is an iterative process and it's supposed to be and that's cool. But you want to make sure you keep track of that so that when you get to the point of writing it up, you can remember what happened. So if you're the in vivo file manager and you're creating your team file, 
just make sure that you've got your data, like your interviews or your focus groups or whatever, cleaned up and formatted how you want them to be before you bring them into InVivo. And as a reminder, the best practice for organizing different file types in InVivo is to have different types of data in different subfolders underneath files. For instance, I would have my interviews in one folder, I would have survey data in another folder, and I might have reports in another folder.